Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So previously on the internet, I found this kind of animation. And initially, I didn't pay too much attention to that until later I found people would like to reproduce this effect in Svirchog because Svirchog provides a kind of Voronoid cutting. However, this effect can be done in geometry nodes. So let's start with a tutorial. So here, let's go to nodings and create a plane. I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifiers and uh, set the type into simple so that I'm only cut a plane without the deformation. I'm going to set the number to cut to seven and then add a geometry node trees, lock the interface. Here, I'm going to take a delete geometry. So basically, we're going to create a Voronoi pattern uh, using Voronoi texture and then compare fruit. We're going to change, so let's plug the distance into the results. And if we increase uh, the distance, then you can see we're creating this kind of bubble. Basically, you can check the how this Voronoi texture really looks like uh, uh, within shader. I think it will be easier to do so. Uh, in this particular case, uh, I don't know how to explain. So just uh, change that to uh, distance to edge. Uh, when it's distance to edge, and uh, let's decrease or increase the value, then we can see uh, we have a different uh, patterns of the deletion that has occurred. We can see a lot of gaps here. This is because the mode is 3D. So if we turn that to 2Ds, then we only have these tiny thin edges being created. And you can see the edge is a little bit jaggy if you zoom in. In this case, you just increase a little bit of subdivision surface and it will be fine. Uh, this is definitely heavy, but this is the method you go for the moment. This is basically the way for you to create a static pattern of Voronoi texture. This is not very good for animation because uh, if you just scale that, then you just zoom in and zoom out. Uh, if you change that to 4D, then you have a W to evolute that, but you also realize all the sound kind of gaps due to the dimension of the texture. So another way to animate that is to take the positions and the vector mass and by animating this vector. However, the issue that you will realize is that this uh, vector has no Z axis. And if you really just change the X and the Y, you just have this kind of flow, obvious flow to one direction, which is nowhere interesting. So this is kind of very controversial to really animate that. Uh, that's why in my another animation called Voronoi Tower, I'm not using Voronoi texture, but instead I'm making uh, my own version of it using whatever method. Okay. But this method is very easy to create your own static Voronoi pattern. And that's what I would like to say. So here, let's move on to animate each island. Uh, these separate islands looks like a kind of ngong or other things. And it's a, a no method to rotate or animate or making the polygon to disappear. This is the methods I've mentioned since 2.93. Uh, but in this case, what you can realize, uh, in fact, is this is not an ngong. These are actually an island that contains many, many different polygons. So our next step is to actually clean up all these kind of polygons. And there is a modifier, which is not in the geometry nodes yet, which is decimate. And he, uh, it contains this planar mode to dissolve all these kind of polygons in the islands. And this node is not in 3.0 and it will never be in 3.0, which means to do the next step, we have to generate a new geometry node trees. And let's uh, untick that. So in the new geometry node tree, let's name that as a polygon. So if this is 3.1, you can do everything within a single node tree. Otherwise, you just have to use another node tree to do this function. The rest is pretty straightforward. So to rotate each polygon, we need to be able to access the polygon center. So here, the I've made a tutorial talking about the capture attribute, which does not only capture the attribute, but also convert the attribute. So we're going to convert the position from the face domain, uh, the, the position from the point domain to the face domain so that 
uh, each polygon vertices location has been averaged out to the polygon center. So this is how it actually works. So in this case, then next uh, we're going to set the position. And uh, I'm going to take a vector rotate. And the vector should be the position center should be the polygon center. And then change the type to ULA and plug the vector to the to the position. Okay, so this is good. And as soon as we are changing these rotations, you can see we are rotating this kind of polygons. Uh, here you may realize the viewport is a little bit heavy because we divided this uh, plane too much. Uh, so for the viewport, maybe you just want maybe six or seven and kind of acceptable amount, amount so that the viewport uh, works fluently while you're working. So you can definitely kick this render level much higher than the viewport level. So this is the idea. Another thing I'm going to do is to take a solidify modifier so it looks kind of more thickness and more interesting. Uh, probably 0 0.1, 0 0.05. Yeah, something like that should be good enough. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is to deal with the orientation. Basically, we want all these kind of polygons to look at uh, a specific direction, for example, water origin or the sphere that's flying around. Uh, in this case, uh, every time you ask a rotation to a direction, you need to use align ruler to vector. And here I'm going to plug this uh, face center into the vector as a function of direction and then check on this z axis. Here you need to realize actually the they are not using their positive face, they are using their back face. That's why uh, we will have some issue later. But uh, we will move on to the next step that uh, we are creating a mask so that the center part of uh, these kind of polygons is rotating, the rest of the part stay there, stay with their orientation. So let's take a UV sphere and I'm going to shrink its size. And I'm going to move that up. So you can use geometry proximity node. Uh, for these kind of functions as I've explained in other tutorials but it will take several nodes for example you have to remap all these kind of distance and deal with the targets uh, especially I do not want to evaluate all these kind of polygons or points I probably would rather to treat this sphere as an empty and using empty you have to take more nodes to make it function in this case I'm just going to use the preset which is proximity fourth and I'm going to select the object and plug the fourth right away. Uh, and it uh, has effects immediately. The only issue that you will realize is that the orientation is wrong, just like the issue that we are mentioning. It does not use its positive face, but a negative face. So in this case, we just uh, make the maximum negative one. So now it's a start work. And you can just fly around. Just to know that if the sphere is flying too high, its effects will also be decreased because of the distance issue. Okay, in this case you can also turn on this scale offset. So that even if it's kind of very high, you can still try. There are also many other ways to do this kind of stuff, it's just uh, whatever. Uh, another thing I want to remind you is that uh, now, now currently by default, I'm evaluating the vertices location, that's why Due to this minor or subtle distance uh, from vertices to vertices, you can see these kind of uh, each polygon is being curved. Maybe this is what you want, or if you want the polygons to be a flat surface, then you just plug this polygon center as a vector, then immediately they become straight. So either way, it depends on how you like your setup. I think both of them are okay. Uh, another thing is that if I move my sphere around, you can see the orientation is not towards the sphere. Okay, so here we have to do a little bit offset uh, with the uh, probably the direction. Um, so in this case, I think I'm going to take a vector mass, and I need to take the object's info, the direction, the look the location of my sphere and then plug into the location. I'm probably going to subtract them so now you can see that uh, D 
the orientation is somehow associated with the sphere. Uh, actually, probably the opposite. Yeah, probably the positive. Yes, something like that. And then deal with the magnitudes. Then you should be all right. Uh, deal with the magnitude, deal with the scale offsets. Uh, parameter thing is not something I would like to discuss, so probably it's just uh, kind of it. Yes. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.